Okay, so that was the poop in the convertible. Uh, we've got a few other things for Z06 and ZR1. Um, the torch rotor is back, of course, and you can get it on these models. But you can also get all colors now on all models. So the Z06 and ZR1, we have eight total colors in the palette. And uh, we've been wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of panel proliferation, as you can imagine, between Coupe Convertible Z06, ZR1, and all the colors. It, it gives Bowling Green a heck of a handful of parts to deal with. Uh, but they're able to manage that now, and so we're able to offer all the colors on all the models. Uh, we're going to have the uh, Z06 and ZR1 uh, available with this cashmere interior I talked about. Uh, the 3LZ package on the Z06 will include the uh, up-level seats on the passenger side, so you'll be able to get the, the lumbar and the side bolster adjustments along with the six-way uh, will be part of the 3LZ package. Uh, the ZL1 uh, will have competition gray wheels available, and uh, it's easy to get this confused. We have another new chassis control system coming out on the ZR1 called Performance Traction and I'll give you some detail on, on what that does. So next slide. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, all the, the colors on all models in Torch Red. Next slide. Uh, there's the competition gray wheels on the, the ZR1 uh, pattern. Next slide. Okay, getting into performance traction. Uh, this is a kind of an evolution of the active handling, the stability system. It uh, fully integrates the, the ride control that comes standard, so the magnetorheological shock absorber technology that we have on the ZR1, the traction control, and the stability systems. This is kind of like the launch control, but it works on a track uh, when you're going around corners. What it lets you do is as you exit a corner, you can just floor the throttle and just steer. And the system, the system modulates the throttle because you know as you exit the throttle, as you exit the corner, you got to squeeze the throttle and balance steering and throttle to get maximum acceleration out of a corner. This turns that into a no-brainer and provides a lot of adjustment for personal driving style, and I'll, I'll get into that detail. Um, so. Uh, it, it lets you set up the car based on the driving conditions, the particular conditions at the track. Um, there's actually five different levels uh, for you. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the way this thing works, it's uh, pretty trick. Uh, people are familiar with the ride control switch we have in the center console. We've re-engineered that switch so that it actually does two distinct features with the same switch. It does uh, what you're used to it doing in, in the top row here, the normal mode, it gives you the tour and sport uh, adjustments on the shock absorbers. But if you hit the traction control and get into competition mode, so the button just to the left of it, you hit that twice, you get that into competition mode, the illumination, actual functional illumination on the switch changes from selective ride, it turns it into a performance traction switch. So it knows you're in a competitive mode, it knows you're gonna to wanna to set the car up for some kind of performance. So next slide shows you how the this system works. The first thing it does is it comes up in the most conservative kind of setting. So the first setting it comes up with is wet, next one is dry, then you have two levels of sport, and then the fifth one is race. So I'm going to go through these in a little bit of detail so you get kind of a sense of, of how this works. So next slide, uh, you, you, what you do is, the way it works is, once you're in this mode, all you do is reach down, it's a big you know, hockey puck sized button so you can do it blindly, you don't have to take your eyes off the road, you reach down, you grab it, you turn it one notch clockwise or to the right, and it in, takes you either more aggressive or you turn it to the left and it's less aggressive. So more conservative, less conservative as you turn the thing one way or the other. So it automatically goes into the most conservative to start. Uh, so this is intended to use actually when you got a damp or you're uncertain of the racetrack conditions, uh, you're looking to be fairly conservative and uh, really a driver of all skill levels might want to start here. So uh, like I said, the engine torque is managed uh, fairly conservatively uh, and you still have the stability system on at this level. So next slide, you notch it over once, 
And uh, this is more intended for dry cat track conditions, but for people, you know, people who would stay in this mode might be a little less experienced or unfamiliar uh, with the track and they just want the car to be a little more conservative around them. So that's dry. The next one is uh, we're starting to get into sport. So this would also be dry track conditions. Uh, drivers that are familiar with the track, but maybe not at a very high skill level. Next slide, you still have the stability control there. So the distinction between the two sport levels is the first one has, you still have the stability system, the safety net around you. This next mode, for sport, you disable the stability control, and but you still have kind of the same level of aggressiveness and how far it'll let the car step out, how much it, it depends on the driver uh, to catch the car as you're uh, nailing it out of a corner. Then the top mode is really intended for you know good track conditions, skilled drivers, familiar with the track. And based on our testing, this is the first time we have uh, come up with an electronic system that actually can improve lap times for professional level drivers. Uh, so this, this is a fairly serious uh, piece of hardware and software. So uh, next slide uh, is a proof of that essentially. What we did is we went to a couple of tracks uh, our uh, test and development engineers are very skilled uh, themselves, maybe not quite at the pro level driving, uh, but they're pretty damn fast and quite skilled because they actually tune these systems uh, for a living. So this is a, a layout of VIR and uh, we took uh, the skilled driver and uh, in this case we substitute Jim Merrow, the guy who drove uh, the Nürburgring lap who's he could be at a professional level, he's maybe not in the very elite class, but he's a, a pro level driver. Uh, so we, we let him do his best around the track, we let our skill development guys uh, drive around the track uh, with the system off and the system on. And you can see in various corners, you pick up a few tents here and a few tents there, but it also makes it easier to drive and it's easy to drive consistent. Uh, if you look at the whole lap time, even for a pro level driver at BIR, we got about a half a second uh, lap improvement, which is pretty substantial. For uh, a skilled driver, still a guy who's very competent, very capable on the track, it turns him into a hero. Almost uh, one point, one and a quarter, 1.3 seconds per lap uh, faster uh, with this system. Uh, so we did it at VIR. We also did the same thing, uh, next slide, at our own track at Milford Proving Grounds, the Milford Road Course and uh, found similar kinds of results. So I won't go through the detail, but uh, the next slide shows the, the uh, I don't know if I'm having trouble, okay, there's the, the layout of our, our internal track, and we saw similar kinds of performance. It's shorter track, uh, the skilled driver got uh, seven tenths uh, out of this, and we haven't finished all of our work uh, with the pro um, level drivers, but uh, very happy with the way the system 